States exhibit sticker. Just a couple. No, I'll just take two sheets. I got mine upstairs. I don't want to waste yours. I'm going to take two sheets. I'll get them at lunchtime. Only swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give in this cause will be the truth. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Would you introduce yourself to the jury? My name is Jennifer Escobar. And for the corporate code, would you spell your last name? E S C O B A R. Now, um, Jennifer, you and I, we have met uh, several occasions. Is that, that be a fair statement? Yes, sir. 
and we've had an opportunity to talk about some of the things that this jury is about to hear. Yes. That also be a fair statement. Yes, sir. First off, let me ask you, do you know a woman by the name of Brenda Delgado? Yes, sir. As best you can, how long have you known Brenda Delgado? Um, from this time, from now, I believe like more than seven years. How did the two of you meet? Um, at the time I was working at Forever 21, she was working as well at the North Park Mall in a spa. Um, she went in the store where I was working at. Um, I was working there as a sales associate and I went up to her. She was looking at clothes and I went up to her as if everything was okay um, with her shopping. Okay. So we're, we're talking about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, the two of y'all working at the same mall but not at the same store. Yes, sir. And after meeting Brenda Delgado back then, did the two of you develop a friendship? Yes, sir. Can you describe that friendship before? Um, after that day, um, we both like clicked. Um, she gave me her number and um, I got in contact with her. Um, she was a she was a good support, a good friend um, back then. Um, basically, I was going through a rough time, and like she helped me a lot back then. And when you say you're going through a rough time, did you have, <coughs> at that point in your life, were you in a relationship that probably was not the healthiest of relationships? Yes, sir. And as part of that relationship, did it? cause you to maybe separate yourself a little bit from Brenda Delgado? Yes, sir. Um, <coughs> due to... Objection to non-response from here, sir. Okay. Did the two of you not see each other for a period of time? Yes, sir. Delgado? Yes, sir. And then at some point, does Brenda Delgado come back into your life? Yes, sir. Can you tell the jury how that happened? Um, she went to my dad's house. Um, and she gave her phone number to my dad, and within that same day, I got back in contact with her, and um, things went on from there. I don't remember exact date. This been been around early 2015. Yes, sir. Were you still living here in Dallas at that time? Yes. And so early 2015, did your friendship kind of reignite with Brenda Delgado? Yes, sir. Um, how much time did you spend together back then? Um, when I was in that relationship, we wouldn't spend so much time. But after, um, we'll spend like two or three days out of the week. Have you ever heard? of the Dr. Ricardo Caniagua? Yes, sir. How did you hear his name? Um, through Brenda. Did Brenda describe him as an ex-boyfriend? Yes, sir. Did Brenda talk about him a lot? Yes, sir, a lot. Okay, so when we say talk about a lot, let's really tell them, how much did she talk about? She would talk about um, him his location, his um, emails, bank account, everything um, about him. Um, she was really obsessed over him. When you say location, what do you mean she talked about his location? Um, she would have a different phone and she would basically know all his location and movement of him. She was following him on, on a phone? Yes, sir. Were there times that she would tell you this is where he is right now? Yes, sir. Did 
it appear to you that, well, strike that. What other things would she talk about as far as Ricky, besides this location? Um, basically, the, she was mad because Ricky broke up with her through an email. Um, he didn't have, in my language, he didn't have the balls to tell her straight up how it was. Um, so she was mad all the time. So this is, she's telling you he did this by email? Yes. Did she ever show you the email? Um, no. So you don't know if that's true or not that it was done by email, do you? No. Was, with so much anger that she had um, and everything that she went through with him, I kind of understood like her anger, but at the same time, she was like super obsessed with him. You mentioned emails. Did she talk about things that she had access to related to Rick? Um, the bank accounts, Gmail, um, pretty much a house key where he lived. Um, Ricky wouldn't be there most of the time, so um, she also had her mom. Um, at that time, she was cleaning his house. Brenda's mom? Yes. And just so we're clear, because you kind of stumbled, did you say that she had a house key of his? Yes. She still had a few stuff over his apartment, as I recall. Did she tell you that she had access to his bank account? Um, she would show me, like, transactions that he would do, and everything would go to his email. Now, during this time, the two of y'all are, are spending time with each other, and she's talking to you about these things. Does she start to talk to you about some things that she wanted to see happen? Yes. And did those things that she wanted to see happen involve Dr. Kendra Hatcher? Yes. Now, again, we, we have talked about this, and you understand that in terms of what happened, some of it's not good as far as how it makes you look then. Yes. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. Can you tell the jury what she asked you to do and what you were supposed to get in return for doing this? She asked me to basically what Christopher Love did. Um, She, she told me that first she wanted Ricky in a coma with a bat, the bat that is right in front of me. Um, also, for Kendra Hatcher, um, an injection needle to put it in her back of her neck. Um, She just wanted to eliminate Kendra Hatcher or even both of them. And in return for doing that, what were you supposed to get? Drugs, um, $2,000 and a car. Drugs, $2,000 and a car. Mm hmm You have to say yes or no. Control. Yes, sorry. Can I approach the witness, Your Honor? And you talked about the bat. Have you seen this bat before? Yes, sir. Um, can you hold that for me? I'm sorry. No. It's not very heavy, is it? No, it's not. Do you think if you hit me with that, that you could hurt me? Um, not as, like, I could hurt you, but not 
Ill hurt you. Not what? Ill. Like. You could hurt me with this, couldn't you? Yeah. Going back to the drugs, money, and the car that you were offered to commit this offense, can you tell the jury at that point in your life why you would even consider something like that? I was really, really messed up. Like, I was doing drugs, going out. <sighs> it's embarrassing that I'm here in front of y'all. And me thinking from the past that I didn't consider saying yes. Um, I, I didn't know where I was at. The things that she asked you to do, did you end up doing? No. Why not? I spoke to my parents. I went to my parents. First, I spoke to my aunt. You're not allowed to say what your parents said oh, to you. Okay. You can talk about what you what you told what you told your parents. Mm -hmm. I told my parents, and literally they were like, "Get out!" I'm like, no, it's not for you. The it's not. Objections and hearsay is the most cross examination. The question here be instructed to disregard the latter part of her answer. Yeah. Now, again, we are talking about. Some years ago, mostly talking about 2015, basically February up through August of 2015. Is that about right? Yes. At some point in time, did you end up moving into and sharing an apartment with Brenda Delgado? Yes, sir. Would that have been around August of 2015? Yes, sir. The beginning of August. And do you remember where those apartments were? Yes, right off of 75 and Lemon. And during that time, again, August 2015, was she still talking a lot about Ricky and Kendra Patrick? Yes. <clears throat> you, were you working at that time? Yes. Do you recall where you were working at? At quality staffing as a recruiter. Were there times that you, and I'm talking about during the time that you and Brenda were living together, were there times that you were reluctant to come home? Yes. And why is that? Because she would talk a lot about him and she would, like, she would be pissed off because I wouldn't come home. Now, again, during that time that you were living with share an apartment, Dr. Hatcher, was there a time where you invited an acquaintance of yours to come over and hang out and swim? Yes. Was that Crystal Cortez? Yes, sir. How long have you known Crystal Cortez? Crystal Cortez have about um, more t than 10 years. We went to high school together. High school buddies? Yeah. Your approach to witness, Sharma? show you what's marked as States Exhibit 87. Do you recognize the person in that photograph? Yes, sir. And who is that? Crystal Cortez. <coughs> well, we'd offer States 87. No objection. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Now, going back to that time that you invited Crystal over, um, did y'all end up taking a trip shortly after that? Yes, right where, after. Where did y'all go? We went to Corpus Christi to go visit her aunt. Okay, and we are talking about you and Crystal, is that fair? Mm -hmm. Not Brenda, but just you and Crystal. Just me and Crystal. And how long did y'all stay there? Only for a day. When you came back from that trip, had something taken place between you and Brenda? Yes. And what did you do in response to that? She went through my suitcase. That I non-responsive. 
What happened that caused you to have an issue with Brenda Delgado? She went through my suitcase, and I didn't like that. Um, if she needed something, she could have asked me or text me or anything. So I got pissed off, and I just left. So how long do you think the two of you actually shared an apartment? For two weeks. Two weeks. Um, after that time when you moved out, did you kind of lose touch with Brenda Dodo? Yes. I received a message um, talking about that I was being ungrateful, that pretty much she was pissed off because I left. When Crystal Cortez came over to hang out with <clears throat> Slim, did she have an opportunity to meet Brenda Delgado? Yes, sir. As far as you know, is that the first time the two of them had ever met each other? Yes, sir. And when you moved out, did you have any indication that Brenda and Crystal were staying in touch with you? No, sir. When did you first find out that the two of them had stayed in touch with each other after you moved out? Whenever Crystal Cortez's family sent me a screenshot uh, with her driving the getaway car, that's whenever I realized that we're still in touch. That was after the murder was publicly reported, correct? Yes, sir. The statement you made about going through a suitcase, is it, number one, is it true that you previously testified in Christopher Love's trial? Yes, sir. Is it also true that you never said one word about Brenda Delgado ever going through your suitcase in that trial? No, sir. Right, so this is the first anybody gets to hear that, correct? Yes, and inside the courtroom, yes. Now, you said that you've known Crystal Cortez since high school, is that what you said? Yes, sir. So did you know her fairly well? Yes, sir. I know her family, her kids. It, is it a true statement that Crystal Cortez knew Christopher Love for some time? I have no clue. And you didn't know one way or the other? No. Right. Did Brenda ever accuse you of stealing property from her? No. No, never? Never. Do you not recall conversations between you and Brenda about you taking property and that's actually what led her to look in your suitcase because she was looking. I'm not asking you if you did steal something. Mm -hmm. I'm asking in terms of why would Brenda go through your suitcase? Did she at least accuse you or make statements that she believed you had taken things from her? Why would I take, if that was the case, why would I take stuff when I was living with her? Well, you're accusing her of the exact same thing. You were living with her, you're accusing her of getting into your things when y'all were living together. Maybe she was looking for something. What's that? Maybe she was looking for something. But whatever it was, she did not find it. Well, that, that, that's, that's kind of the, the point of it. She believes, more so, I'll kind of mm -hmm. narrow it down. Mm -hmm. The, the claim was you had taken some jewelry that belonged to her and she wanted it back, right? No, sir. You, did, did she first ask you, did you borrow certain pieces of jewelry? No, sir. She so, never had jewelry at the time. What's she, that? She never had jewelry at the time, as I recall. You're, you're saying a woman in her 30s doesn't have a single piece of jewelry? That's your sworn testimony to this jury? I don't believe I'm here for some jewelry. You're here to tell the truth, aren't you? Yes, sir. I, you're saying that she went through your bag and you determined that she had. And my question, when I asked you if she accused you, you said, I wouldn't do that. We were living together. Basically, it's a communal deal. We live together. We share. Is that kind of what it was? No, sir. All right. 
Well, then she's going through your bag and you get mad. What I'm asking is, why don't you tell this jury what was her motivation for going through your suitcase? I would like to know as well, why was she going through my suitcase? Well, then why don't you tell this jury what the discussion was so we can, like, cut to the chase and find out why did Brenda go through your bag? Why did y'all have a fight? Why did you move out? I mean, what are the I'm, I moved out because she wanted me to do stuff that I did not want to do. One, she was obsessed. She was always on my ass about um, being here at the apartment with her, going to go look for this woman, Kendra Hatcher, when she was happily ever after with breaking. Just moments ago, this prosecutor seated three men to my left asked you, was there a reason you moved out and it was over Brenda, your testimony? She's... Excuse me, ma'am. Your testimony then, not moments ago, was Brenda Delgado went through my bag, I didn't like it, and that's why I moved out. Is it a true statement that you just said to this, yes. man, to this jury less than five minutes ago? Yes. So now your testimony is, now your testimony is, she asked me to do things, she asked me to do bad things, she asked me to do illegal things, and that's why I moved out. That was one of the reasons, but mostly it was because of the suitcase. She could have told me straight up and told me about missing jewelry when I never got anything. We all obviously had a conversation about why did you go through my bag, and for whatever reason, you won't tell this jury is that a true statement. I don't even know why she went through my bag. You tell me there never was any single discussion, not a conversation between roommates, and when you get mad and it's mad enough to make you move out, there's never a conversation about what you miss. Why did you go through my bag? I just got on my stuff and left. Come back to the, the real thing here. She, According to you, she's asking you to do bad things to either Ricky or Kendra or both. Did that happen? No. That didn't happen. All right. Did she ask you to do illegal and bad? And bad? I mean, I'll, no, let me rephrase. Bad, I'll just say, means illegal. So I'll ask it that way. You're saying that she asked you to do illegal things to Dr. Hatcher or to Ricky or to both. Is that a true statement? That's a true statement. Right. And then there was a discussion that she was going to pay you, compensate you in some way for doing illegal things to Ricky or to Dr. Hatcher or to both of them. <coughs> And you described that as 2,000 cash a car, and what specific drugs? Weed. I will weed. smoke a lot of weed. So she's asking, and do you understand this was to hurt him or kill him? To either or. She wanted to eliminate. All right. So eliminate. So I'm curious, how much weed do you get for participating in a murder for hire? She didn't describe. She just you, said weed. You drugs. told you told this drugs, time? drugs, two thousand dollars in a car. She never was a specific how, the quantity. You told this prosecutor. Let's go back to what you said to the prosecutor. <laughs> what you told this jury that originally we, you said yes, and we had some kind of a deal. I'm just asking, what was that deal if you had one? Because that's what you told them. If I went through it and did it, I was supposed to do the same thing that Christopher <laughs> did, Love did. I'm asking you what the deal was. How, you, I, you said drugs. I'm asking what drugs. You said weed. Now I'm asking you how much. She wasn't specific on the quantity. You're supposed to be the one doing it. You didn't ask when we talk about a joint, or do I get like a, a trailer, a tractor trailer full of weed? At the time, she was not specific. She just said, I will get you weed. I'll get you drugs. I was messed up back then. Um, what drugs were you doing? Exos, bars. Well, say, um, say that in English. Um, I don't know. You said exo. What's exo? Exos, um, some type of pills. Um, some type of pills? Sanix, however you all know. Well, what, how many different drugs were you taking during this time frame that you're talking about? I don't recall. More than 10 different kinds? No, I want to coke, weed, bars. What are bars? Egg, Sonics. I don't know what else, what y'all know I'm from. All right, so would you say that you were 
at the time of this going on, would you say that you were taking more than five different kinds of drugs, but not more than ten? Yes, sir. All right. What do all these different drugs do to you? Made me feel stupid. Made me forget what I was doing. Do they alter your mind? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do they make you forget things? Yes, sir. Do they make you hallucinate? Weed. Yes, sir. And and then if we go take them individually like that, what happens when you mix them all together? Does it produce a whole totally different effect? It's it's a downer effect. Downer? Yes, sir. Depressant? Yes, sir. Depressant impairs memory? Oh, no. That, well, you said downer. What does downer mean to you? Downer, depressive, sleepy, um, drowsy. One of the drugs you mentioned was cocaine. Cocaine is one of the most powerful stimulants on the planet, isn't it? Yes, sir. So. Cocaine doesn't make you sleepy, does it? No, it's an upper drug. And you were doing marijuana. That doesn't, that's that's a totally different effect, isn't it? Yes, sir. Were you taking drugs that you didn't even know what they were? Yes, sir. And were you taking these drugs along with other drugs? In other words, let me back up. Would you say, today is Monday and today I'm only going to do cocaine, or would it be any day I'm going to do a whole bunch of different drugs? It was any day a whole bunch of drugs. So during all the times relevant to what you're telling this jury about, you were on more drugs than you can tell us, and you were using them in combination with all of them. True? Yes, sir. Now, you said drugs, a car, and $2,000, and she didn't specify and there wasn't anything as if that was nothing but an offer. That was an offer for me to inject on Kendra Hatcher the syringe that she bought. My question though is, this, according to your testimony, got beyond an offer. According to what you told Mr. Brooks, <coughs> we had, at least initially, an agreement. So it wasn't, and you correct me if I'm wrong, it wasn't she just floated an offer. You're, you told this jury, you told Mr. Brooks, that we actually at one time had an agreement and I had agreed to do these things. Yes, sir. So that's why I'm asking, since if we're not talking about just floating off, but we're talking about we got a contract of sorts, at least according to your drug-induced memory. So my question is, how, you said weed, how much weed? How is that never discussed if we have an agreement? How is there not an agreement that I'm going to get some amount, some real amount, a concrete amount? How do you know that she's fulfilled her obligation if you fulfill your obligation? I believe more than an ounce because I would smoke it a lot. But we never went to an agreement that it was going to be the exact quantity. She just said, I'm going to give you drugs, I'm going to give you $2,000 and a car. That's it. More than an ounce. As much as what it sounds like you're smoking, it sounds like you burned through that in a week. Well, back then, yeah. Right now, I'm good. I'm not saying right now. I'm talking about you're telling this jury under oath that you're basically, you're talking about events when it sounds like you were in something close to a drug-induced coma, and now you're telling us what happened, and you said you agreed. So why wouldn't there, if there's an agreement, like you told this jury on direct examination, if there was an agreement, why is it you can't say how much? Because she, she was never specific. Yes, I understand the point that you're coming from, that there was an agreement, but she was never specific. She just said drugs, $2,000, and a car. That's it. That would be fine if all she did was talk out loud and say stuff like this. I never thought that she was going to do what she did. Let me go back to my question. That would be fine if she was just talking out loud <laughs> saying stuff like this, but it's different when you say that you had agreed. I understand, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I understood you to say to Mr. Brooks and to this jury that you did have an agreement, that you, at least initially, that you would do these things to Dr. Paniagua and Dr. Hatcher. Yes, sir. 
So if you had an agreement, I'm asking if that really happened, and it's not the product of some drug-induced whatever, if that really happened, why is it you can't articulate this jury? I was going to get a pound of weed. Mr. Governor, this is the third time we've had this exact line of question. Let's move on, please. What kind of car? She wasn't specific. Just said a car. That's Did it. you not ask? No, sir. I mean, a good car, nice car, expensive car, a brand? I was a mess. Any car was fine with me. You previously, is it a true statement that you previously said that Brenda was gone a lot because she was gone to school? Yes, she was gone all the time. And you previously said that she was gone a lot because she was taking tests? Yes, sir. These tests were school related, correct? Yes. You had previously said that she was gone a lot and she was specifically at one point studying for her state board exams, correct? Yes, sir. Are those things true? Of course. So while you're there doing drugs, Brenda's going to school. Brenda's studying. Brenda's taking classes. Brenda's taking tests. And Brenda's studying for her state board exam. Is that all true? Yes, sir. Pass the witness. Jennifer? Yes. Um, during this time that you are back in whatever type of friendship that you and the defendant had. Uh, you talk about, you were, were you working? Yes, I was working actually two jobs, going back and forth, no car. Do you think you could have held two jobs as well as being a drug-induced coma? No. So despite the drug use, you were managing to hold down two jobs? It was a pretty big mess. And Do you see Brenda Delgado in the courtroom? Yes. Can you point to her and describe uh, how she's dressed today? She's wearing glasses, black hair, and looking straight to the judge. Her uh, direct reflectors witnesses identified the defendant in open court. <coughs> and these these conversations that you're having with her about what she wants to see happen to Ricky and Kendra Hatcher, were those conversations taking place here in Dallas County? Yes. State of Texas? Yes. Pass the witness. Did you ever go to any of those jobs while under the influence of drugs? Um, yes. Pass the witness. Thank you, ma'am. You may speak down. Excuse you. Yes. <coughs> you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give in this cause will be the truth. Yes, I do. Hi, I'm Dr. Rosie Singh. Could you spell your last name for the court reporter? It's S-I-N-G-H. And Dr. Singh, uh, what type of doctor are you? I am a pediatric dentist. Same type of dentist, Kinder Hatchman? Uh, similar. She was a general dentist who saw a lot of children. And you reside here in Dallas? Yes, I do. Did you know Kinder Hatcher? Yes, I did. Can you tell the jury how you came to know Kendra Hatcher? Um, I met Kendra in 2014-2015. Um, we would do Bikram yoga here in Dallas and we became friends and we ended up having a lot in common and she was definitely my best friend. You consider her your best friend? Yes, I do. Now, going back to uh, September 2015, Did Kendra find a need to come past or drop by your apartment to pick something up? Yes. Um, she was traveling with her boyfriend. They were going to Mexico. Um, so I had um, a waterproof camera of hers 
from a previous vacation, and so she was coming to my apartment to pick that camera up before her vacation. And do you recall this being on September the 2nd of 2015? Yes, sir. When was her vacation supposed to start? The following day. September the 3rd? Yes, sir. And did she, were you at home when she came to pick up the camera? I was not at home. I was also traveling that day, so I, um, Kendra had visited my apartment many times. I had a doorman at my building, so I gave um, permission for her to enter my apartment through the doorman. And did she leave you any type of indication that she had been there and had picked up the camera and left with it? Yes, sir. So when I finally ended up returning back to Texas, which was after Kendra Hatcher's funeral, she had left me a note in my apartment. You just mentioned when you came back to Texas. Were you in the state of Texas when she was killed? I was not. I was um, traveling to Michigan at the time. And how did you find out what had happened to Dr. Hatcher? I found out um, from her boyfriend, Ricky. Did he... The day it happened, the day after it happened? The day it happened. I found out the day it happened. Mayor Coach, the witness room. Yeah. You mentioned that um, it was an underwater camera. Let me show you. It's marked as State's Exhibit 167. That's a photograph here. What does that look like? That is a waterproof Nikon Coolpix camera. Does that appear to be the camera that she came to pick up? Yes, sir. This is the exact camera that she picked up. And you also made reference to her leaving a note to let you know that she had been there? Yes, sir. And um, did you keep that note? Yes, I have it. Uh, do you still have it with you? I still have it with me. And at a previous hearing, did we have a copy of that made um, to show the jury? Yes, sir. And does this appear to be a photograph of that copy? Yes, it is. Does it read exactly as the note that you have? <coughs> Yes, sir. Do you have the original with you? Yes, I do. Can you pull it out, please? And just take a look at this, which is the original, and take a look at the photograph and just verify that it's one and the same. Yes, it's an exact copy. Did you know Kendra well enough to recognize her handwriting? Yes, sir. And does this appear to be her handwriting? Yes, that's absolutely her handwriting. All right, we offer stakes. 167, the stage 138. No objection. Okay. Commissioner Publish? Okay. <coughs> and that is a picture that, is that a picture that Kendra sent to you? I actually had sent her a picture of this camera as I was leaving my apartment, so I just took a picture of the camera, it was lying on my bed. So I took the picture. Do you remember, uh, and if you don't, that's fine, but which part of the apartment did you leave the camera? In my bedroom. <coughs> and looking at, looking at States 138, um, could you read that please? Yes, sir. Um, this note is from Kendra Hatcher. It says, thank you, sister friends. You're the best. Hope you had a great trip home. See you soon this week. Love you, Kendra, with a heart. So, just so we're clear, that's in your apartment you get back, right? Yes, sir. The camera is not? Yes. The, no, I mean, the camera was not in my apartment. Pass, please. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. Hi. Did you 
introduce yourself to the jury, please? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Ricardo Paniagua. And Dr. Paniagua, without giving us the, the exact address, what part of the country do you live in now? Uh, I currently live in the Sacramento area, uh, Sacramento, California. And how are you employed? I'm a dermatologist. I work at uh, Kaiser. Sorry? I work at Kaiser Permanente. Kaiser Permanente? Mm -hmm. How long have you been with Kaiser Permanente? Approximately three years. And Dr. Paniagua, going back to the years of 2014, 2013 or 2014, yes. up through 2015, uh, where were you living? Dallas, Texas. And what was your reason for being here in Dallas during those years? I was a, a resident in the dermatology program at UT Southwestern. And just briefly, can you tell the jury what that means in terms of being a resident, what's required, what your sure. day-to-day -day activities might be? Sure. So residency is after medical school. Uh, medical school, I believe, is a foundation of uh, have a, a, broad ba uh, uh, a broad base of medical training. And then with residency, you, you have a, you start working within a, a specialized branch of medicine. And so for, uh, for me, I was a, a dermatology resident, um, meaning that, the, that that was the kind of area of, uh, within medicine that I was uh, focusing on. And going back to 2014, I believe, did you meet a woman by the name of Brenda Delgado? I met Brit. It, it was before that. Yeah, we met around <clears throat> August of 2012. And did the two of you start dating in August of 2012? Yes, sir. And how long would you say that y'all dated? Approximately two and a half years. Uh, during the time that you and Brenda Delgado were dating, did it turn into some like serious relationship? Yes, sir. In fact, was there a point in time where she uh, moved in with you? Yes, sir. Can you tell the jury how that came about? Was there any one event that triggered that, or was it a decision the two of y'all sat down and said, hey, let's do this? Well, the, the circumstances were that uh, Brenda was being kicked, uh, she was asked to move out of her, uh, of what was her current residence at the time. She was living with her best friend and her best friend's husband, and she was told that she could no longer live there. Objection to the hearsay. So at some point, she's not able to live where she had been. Yes, sir. How did the discussion come about that she was to move in with you? Uh, this was around November of 2012, and uh, she asked if she could move in. And you agreed? And I agreed. Yes, sir. Um, would you say the relationship was, did you have a sense that that relationship was going somewhere? For a period of time, yes, sir. And then after a period of time, did it seem to you that this might not be the best relationship for you? Yes, sir. Um, about when was that? Well, there were two major uh, breakpoints in the relationship. The first was in July of 2014, uh, and then we started dating again uh, later that fall of 2014, and the final breakup occurred February of 2015. So you have an initial breakup when? Uh, approximately around July of 2014. And then get back together around when? Uh, after the first breakup? After the first breakup, it was around October or November of 2014. October, November 2014, was there an activity that you had started taking part in? So <clears throat> prior to that, around September of 2014, I had started to attend a salsa dance class. And what part of town was that in? It was north of Dallas. Uh, I 
could point it out on the map, but I don't recall right offhand. And while you're taking this salsa dancing class, was there a time where Brenda Delgado showed up at those same classes? Yes, sir. For the first two weeks, I would I was there in the class, and after about the second week, it was a weekly class, and after the second week, then uh, Brenda started showing up at the class. Had you any idea that she was going to be taking the same class? No, sir. And so just so the point is clear, the class starts, you're in it, <clears throat> then later on she's part of the class. Yes, sir. And in conversations that you and I have had, you've talked, have, have we talked about how, what takes place during those classes? So this was a, a this was the type of class in which you the the partners rotate the men rotate from one uh, woman to to another uh, the time at which you dance with one individual is three to five minutes typically. And so if you're going down the rotation, at some point you end up having Brenda as your dance partner. Yes, sir. Is that difficult? At first, yes. And as a result of partnering up, did the two of y'all start talking with each other again? Yes, sir. Um, we started talking a little bit more even while we were dancing with each other. And then after class, we started to uh, practice. And that you know, reintroduced each other into our lives. and. Uh, eventually we decided to give the relationship another try. So, the two of you make a decision to, let's try this again. Yes, sir. How long does that last? That was from approximately November of 2014 until February of that took place? Yes, sir. Was there a time where she became pregnant? Yes, sir. And did the two of y'all have discussions about that? Yes, sir. And ultimately, did, you, did the two of you agree to have a child? No, sir. After that, you still were, were you still in a relationship with Brenda? Yes, sir. That event was in June of 2013. And so when we fast forward to February of 2015? Yes, sir. Um, that would have been the last time that you were in a relationship with Brenda? Yes, sir. Now, as you moved on from Brenda, did you start start dating again? The lack of yes, sir. And Around what time frame did you meet Kendra Hatcher? May 2015. And no first witness, Did you and Dr. Hatcher hit it off right away? Yes, sir. Did the two of you start spending a lot of time together? Yes, sir. And as a result of that, do you recall if any email or however, any way you contacted uh, Brenda Delgado to let her know about this new relationship? Uh, early June 2015, I, I sent an email to Brenda specifying that I was in a relationship that was going very good. Let me ask you to take a look, look at State's Exhibit 78. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes, sir. Is this a photograph of, of you and, and Kendra Hatcher? Yes. Do you know about when this was taken? That was the first week of June 2015. Are we are for states exhibit 78. No objection. Mm -hmm.
said that was the first week of June? Approximately, yes, sir. And how would you describe your relationship with Dr. Hatcher? It was, it was great, it, it, for lack of a, a better word. It, it was, we, our, our values were, were matched, our interests were matched. We just were really in sync from, from right from the get-go. Now, as a result of how well things were going, as you say, with Dr. Hatcher, um, what kind of plans did you start making? So then by uh, August of that, in terms of, can I clarify, can you clarify? In terms of where your relationship was, was going. Um, so by August of, of 2015, we had uh, dis discussed a, a wedding fund. Um, I was going to visit her family in September. She had already visited my family um, on three separate occasions that summer. And we were, I was, the, the plan for me was to go to uh, California in October of 2015. And um, we were troubleshooting in terms of, you know, what, what types of, uh, what what the process would be for her to get a, 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 a her um, ability to practice dentistry in California. And during this time frame, and we're, and we're um, specifically referencing uh, June, July, August of 2015, were there times that you would still have some communication with Brenda Delgado? Yes, sir. Was there a certain thing that those communications were primarily about? Uh, the, the biggest was that I was having some uh, some troubles with my vehicle, and I had reached out to Brenda to see if she knew of somebody who would be able to uh, repair the uh, vehicle at a reasonable price. And did she indicate that she did? Yes, sir. <clears throat> so tell the jury how that worked. So she coordinated with uh, Jose Ortiz, um, who was one of her close friends, um, for me to bring my uh, to bring my truck to uh, his shop, and um, and so she picked me up. We followed the tow truck to the shop. Um, we spoke with Jose for a, a brief period, and then she took me to work. Uh, <coughs> approximately one week later. When I was picking up the truck, um, she had uh, picked me up at my residence. She took me to the shop. I uh, paid the, the bill owed to Jose. Um, and then I took my vehicle and went, um, went back to my place and uh, parted ways with uh, Brenda. And was that the, would that be the gist of those conversations or, or contacts with each other? basically related to your truck? Uh, yes, sir. Now, during the same time that we're talking about, after you had broken up with, uh, with Brenda, uh, would there be times, or were there times that you're jogging, and she shows up out of nowhere jogging, basically the same area that you are? Yes, sir. Do you have a number of times you recall that happening? If you don't, that's fine. Well, I, what I recall is that between about March 2015 to May 2015, that typically my expectation would be that about every seven to 10 days that I would pass her uh, running on the Katy Trail. That struck you as odd in any way? At the time, I thought it was just coincidence. I, yeah. Um, and during this time frame before uh, you started a relationship with Dr. Hatcher, as you mentioned, you were dating. Was there an occasion where you were on a date and you ran into Brenda Delgado? Yes, sir. Do uh, you remember where you were? Yes, sir. Uh, this was the end of <coughs> March 2015, and I was at, uh, I went to brunch at Panera Bread um, with, uh, with Merlon Mason. And um, as I was 
exiting from one door, I saw Brenda entering from uh, another door. She was somebody with, that I dated uh, for a period in uh, March, April, and in the early May of 2015. Approach Dr. I'm going to show you what's marked. It's marked at State's Exhibit 82, 83, and 84. These appear to be screenshots. Yes, sir. And looking at the office, states 82, 83, 84. It says no objection to states exhibits 82 through 84. Submitted. Commissioner Publisher. So, Dr. Looking at states 82, does that appear to be a screenshot of a conversation with Merlandia? Yes, sir. States 83, does that appear to be a screenshot of another email? Confirming a, a trip that you were going to take. Yes, sir. And who was that? Who were you going on that trip with? That was with Merland. And states 84. Does that appear to be a screenshot of a receipt? Yes, sir. And what is it a receipt of? Of the uh, the flight to uh, to Denver. Yes, sir. And 83, as I just showed you, correct? Yes, sir. And again, what is 83 for? This was the the, um, the purchase of a flight to Denver for myself and Roland. And hypothetically, Doctor, would there be any reason for either of those items to be on Brenda Delgado's phone? No, sir. Time, Doctor, when you are before you begin an exclusive relationship with Dr. Hatcher, how how were you uh, meeting? I haven't been on the dating scene for quite some time, so how does it work nowadays? Uh, with um, with Merland, we had met on uh, Match.com, which is a, a, a dating website, and with uh, Kendra, we had met on uh, Tinder, which is more of a phone app. And. I guess on these the online stuff, do you have a profile that you set out? Yes, sir. Air approach, Your Honor. 
It's Marcus States Exhibit 81. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. And would that be a profile of you? Yes, sir. Is this what would have been on those those two sites that you talked about? I believe that was my on Tinder, if I recall correctly. Your Honor, we'd offer States 81. Again, that, that profile, so that's, is that the profile from Tinder? I believe so, yes, sir. States 85 doctor, does that appear to be email address? Yes, sir. Uh, that be your email address? Yes, sir. Uh, and do you know whose email address this would be? Do, if you know. The email address? Or are you, are you referring to this? You pointed to this? Yeah, I'll strike that. And then for record purposes only, none of this will be published okay. to the public. Does this appear to be a photograph? Your social security card. Yes, sir. All right, we'd offer state. I'm sorry, what number was that, Mr. Brooks? 168, I'm sorry, Judge. And we'd offer 168 for record purposes only and 85 for all purposes. It's on 168, no question for record purposes. Some relevancy uh, later in time. We have no objection. All right, you're admitted. Commissioner Public. No. So, Doctor, looking at on the screen that I think you told us that is your email address correct yes sir and below that would that be a passcode that you were using back then that was a, a passcode at that point yes sir so hypothetically would there be any reason for that to be on the phone along with the room and go out no sir Identify it on a BAMP, I believe. Do you remember the name of the place? As I sit here right now, no. That's fine. May I approach your honor? You witness? So let me show you states 76. Smiles on, yes. 77 and 80. What is 76? That's where... Well, let me ask you this way. Do you recognize what's depicted on state 76? Yes, sir. That's uh, where 
Kendra used to work. And State 77, do you recognize what that is? Yes, sir. That was where she was employed. And then States 80, do you recognize that? Yes, sir. And what does that appear to be? It's a, a photo of Kendra Hatcher and I. All right, we have State 76, 77, and 80. So 76, what is, what is the jury looking at here, Doctor? This is a, a shot of where, approximately where uh, Kendra Hatcher used to work at Smile Zone. Yeah, Road? Yes, sir. <coughs> 245 East Grower, Grower Road. And 77? Just a closer image of, of that map. And States Exhibit 80? This is a, a photo of uh, Dr. Hatcher and I. It would have been at the end of June 2015 or early July 2015, I believe. Would that have been Dr. Hatcher's Facebook profile? At one point, yes, sir. And hypothetically, any reason that should be on Brenda the Delgado's phone? Kendra had an, op an open Facebook page, meaning that anybody could, from the anybody could um, go onto her site by just looking her up. And to your knowledge, uh, Brenda Delgado and Kendra Hatcher ever met each other? No, sir. So when we fast forward to September the 2nd, 2015, uh, you recall the events of that day, or do you? Yes, sir. What were the plans that you and Kendra had that day? On some, September the 2nd. September the 2nd. So on September 2nd, um, both her and I worked. Um, I worked uh, a morning and afternoon schedule. Uh, Kendra worked from about 1 to 6.45 p.m. I finished working at UT Southwestern around 4.15 p.m. Uh, then I went to my own apartment initially after work, gathered some items because the plan had been that we were going to be taking a trip to uh, Cancun, Mexico uh, the very next morning. Uh, and then I gathered my items and take them back to uh, Kendra's house, her apartment. And do you know where Kendra was at that time? She was working. And describe how, what you were doing while you were waiting for her to get off of work. So while I was waiting, I was packing, and I and between about six and seven thirty, I left her apartment and went running on the Katy Trail, um, and then came back to her place to shower and such. And she had sent a couple of text messages to me around that time period. I didn't have my phone with me when I went running, but when I, when I came back into her apartment, just before 7 p.m., she had sent a message saying that she was on her way. And then about 20 minutes later, she sent another message saying that she had decided to go to um, Rosie's apartment to pick up an underwater camera. Um, before coming coming back to the apartment, and then about um, seven thirty five p m uh, she sent another message um, saying the exact same thing as before that she was on her way on my way home and during this time frame are you you're at are you at her apartment uh, I met her apartment at that time. I get back from running about seven fifteen p m and i and met her apartment until about just after uh, 8 p.m. So 
what happens after 8 p.m.? So I, I send, I'm waiting for Kendra to, to come back to her place. Um, a little before 8 o'clock, I send her a message um, just saying that I'm starting to get a little bit you know, hungry and kind of checking on her in terms of her dinner plans. Um, this time, just to, in contrast to the message that, was, that I had sent uh, at just past 7.30, in which that was shown as delivered. Now, this one that was sent just before 8 o'clock, it, it was not showing as delivered. The message wasn't going through. Um, about 10 minutes after that, a little after 8 o'clock, I sent a follow-up message um, saying that I'm starting to get a little bit lightheaded. I'm going to go and, and get some food. And so then I, I leave her apartment. This would have been about 8.05 8 p.m. I leave her apartment, which is located on the 17th floor. I go down to the first floor. I kind of walk around her building. And there's a, there's a taco stand that's uh, immediately across the street from where she lived, you know, right next to Mesomaya. And so I um, walk to the taco stand. Um, at about 8, 8.05, 8, 10 p.m. Did you have dinner there? Yes, sir. When you left the taco stand, uh, where did you go? Um, at about 8.45 p.m., I uh, left to go um, back to my apartment. Um, I, I was sending um, some messages and the, that were still showing as not being delivered, and so I, I just figured that I had a little bit of, of extra time, and so I went back to my apartment to um, get any last-minute items. Uh, I was there until about 9.30, um, and then I took another Uber uh, back to uh, Kendra's apartment. And so I arrived back at the complex um, right around uh, 9.45 p.m. that night. When you got back to Dr. Hatcher's apartment that night, <clears throat> tell the jury what you saw. Things were very different this time compared to, to normally. So, so normally it's a very simple process for me to get, get to her apartment. I'm, I'm on her guest list. I have, a, I have her um, apartment key. So it's, it's very simple for me to just go to the front desk, ask to be, you have to get buzzed into the, uh, uh, to her floor. You know, I just go to the front desk, ask to get buzzed into the, the onto the 17th floor, and then I go to her apartment. It's, it's um, quite an easy process. This time, when I go to the front desk, um, they don't allow me to get buzzed up her elevator. The front desk staff just, when I ask him, can I get buzzed up, he just, he holds up his hand and he says, hold on. And at that point, because, you know, there was commotion going on outside, there was, um, there were police vehicles, there were just a lot of, there was a lot, lot, lot of activity. I, it didn't even dawn on me, I didn't even, Consider the possibility of it being related to to Kendra, but then when he when he held up his hand and said, "Hold on," and it, it just it bypassed that simple process. And now my mind is starting to jump to worst case scenarios. Okay, let me ask you this, Doctor. Um, so when you got back the this, this second time, did you see all the police activity? Well, I had seen that um, when I went to the taco stand. Uh, a little bit earlier, like around 8.15, I, I had already um, seen that there was commotion. In fact, I had sent a, a message to, to Kendra saying, you know, hey, you know, by the way, your, the entrance to your um, parking garage seems to be blocked. You, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to, to get in. You'll probably have to find another place to park tonight. Um, so I, I was already aware that there was something going on. I just had no idea what, what was going on there. When you go back and you're asked to hold up in terms of you going up to the 17th floor, what happens after that? So then that's that's where I start panicking. You know, now I'm just 
now just the possibility of something happening to Kendra starts to enter my mind, and I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm very, I'm scared, I'm panicking, I, I just, I don't know, um, I'm asking, uh, I'm asking them to tell me, you know, what's going on, you know, where's Kendra, I keep asking that, where's Kendra, I'm, I'm texting her saying, you know, let me in, they're not letting me in, you know, and, um, They bring me to the back room, and when I'm in the back room, they um, there are a number of invest there are investigators, there are policemen, and um, finally the. Cons let, me, let me stop Sorry. you, Doctor. Without saying what someone said to you, is that when you found out that she had died? Yes, sir. Switching gears just a little bit with you, during the time that um, you and uh, Brenda Delgado were in a relationship, um, were there certain things that you were helping her do financially? When we were, when, I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? Was there a cell phone that you were helping her with? Uh, yes, sir. Um, we were, she was on my cell phone plan um, at the end of the relationship in uh, February, and I had asked her several times to get her own phone plan, and um, uh, it, it just it, it wasn't happening. And so, um, at the end of August of 2015, um, we I was I was finally able to to get her off of the plan. End of August 2015, did you have her taken off your cell phone? Yes, sir. In our offense date, the date this happened was in September the second. Yeah. Yes, sir. In fact, it was August thirty first that I that she was uh, taken off the plan. Um, was did Brenda know you were planning to move to California? Had that ever come up in conversations between the two of y'all? That was a, a plan that at that time in summer of 2015? I, I don't recall. I mean, I know that when we, when we were together, that was uh, the, the path that I was on. Yes, sir. Can you, and I understand it's difficult, can you point to her and describe an article of clothing that she found? She's at the end of the desk and she's uh, wearing a, a dark jacket.
Yeah, that would help me. Do you have the number? Yep. Do you already know the number? Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, I'll let you know. Well, let's give them that so if you can just do something similar to that. How many witnesses? I have two exactly. Mainly pictures and some pictures. Do you have my pen right there? Yeah. Can I give you this one?